in this lecture i am going to start the second unit that is vibration generation mechanism so the co statement is analyze the vibration generation mechanism so the first topic is source classification okay what are all the different sources of vibration so the first one it is forces generated within the machine then the second one is machinery fault the third one is resonance then the fourth one is self excited vibration then the last one is flow induced vibration okay so to control the vibration in any systems we must have a clear idea about what are all the sources and uh, the generation mechanisms of vibration okay so we will see the sources one by one the first one it is vibration because of force generated within the machine okay so the vibration is generated because of the internal forces inside the machine so there are different types of uh, internal forces are there the first one is change in direction with respect to time okay so the perfect example for change in direction with respect to time is unbalanced system okay so you can consider this image an unbalance of m is placed at a radius of r okay so when the system rotates what will happen is so in this position the direction of force will be like this so when it rotates the mass assume that the mass is here and the force direction will be like this okay so when the system rotates automatically the direction of forces is starts to vary okay so this change in direction of force with time will create an vibration in the shaft so this is the first example and the second one is change in amplitude so in the case of uh, motors and generators you can see that so if the gap varies then what will happen is the amplitude will vary okay so if the amplitude will vary what will happen is we will get a pulsating force okay so because of the pulsating force and vibration is generated in the shaft so this is the second example of internal force then the third one is frictional force so we know that whenever there is a restriction to a motion then it is called as a friction okay so because of the friction we know that if the body is moving like this a frictional force will be induced in the opposite direction of the applied force so because of this frictional force what will happen is the vibration is generated okay so mostly in the linear systems because of the frictional forces the vibration is highly induced okay so that is the main internal force that generates the vibration then the next one is impact forces okay impact forces means the force is applied for a short duration of period okay so there are two cases of uh, impact forces are there the first one is you can consider a gear you can see that in this gear a single tooth was broken okay so if this tooth was broken what will happen is during that uh, meshing the gear will not uh, properly mesh with the mating gear okay so whenever this gear comes into contact what will happen is it will create a impact force so the next tooth will try to uh, apply the force on the mating gear so this will create an impact force and that impact force will create a vibration on the gear okay so if one tooth has broken then it will create one pulse for one complete revolution so if two tooth was broken then it will create two impulse for one complete revolution so this is in the case of uh, gears so in the case of bearing there are four possibilities of faults are there the first one is cage fault then the second one is ball fault the third one is outer race fault and the final one is inner race fault okay so for example i am going to consider the ball fault okay so there are uh, many balls are there in a ball bearing so if one ball is uh, uh, failed then what will happen is during the revolution because of the failure uh, ball an impact force is generated in between the inner and outer race okay so this impact force will generate the vibration in the bearing and as far as we know that we will generally measure the vibration in the bearings okay so if the bearing is subjected to vibration that will definitely affect the system then the next one is flow turbulence in fluid handling devices okay 
So this flow turbulence occurs in pipes and pumps. So here I have considered a centrifugal pump for example. So you can see the right side image, the flow is uh, so in the left side you can see that there are uh, some uh, mixture of laminar and turbulent flow is there. Okay, So some of the particles are moving linearly and some of the particles are moving in a turbulence manner. So if the flow is a turbulence flow then what will happen is then this will uh, vibrate the system, it will vibrate the blade, then it will vibrate the outer casing. Okay, So this vibration will be transmitted to the, uh, for example if uh, the centrifugal pump is fixed in a motor then this uh, uh, vibration generated in the centrifugal pump will be transmitted to the motor. Okay, So that will damage the motor. You can see that this is the time domain signal for a turbulence uh, pump. So you can see that the amplitudes are high. If you convert this time domain signal into a frequency domain signal, time domain means the x-axis is time and the y-axis is amplitude. Frequency domain, I am going to convert this uh, time domain signal into a frequency domain signal using fast Fourier transform. So here I can see a tall peak. Okay, So this peak is because of the flow turbulence. Okay, Then the last one is combustion turbulence in gas turbines are Boiler. So in gas turbines or boilers, during the combustion, what will happen is the turbulence will take place. Okay, so that turbulence will vibrate the gas turbine or boiler. Okay, so these are all the internal forces that generates the vibration. So this is the first source of vibration. Then the second source is machinery fault. So vibration because of machinery fault. So when the machinery is caused, continues to rotate for uh, over a long time what will happen is uh, it is subjected to wear and tear and it starts to vibrate okay so because of the vibration sometimes the machinery may fail okay so once if uh, any of these faults are developed then automatically they will provide symptoms so what we have to do is we have to measure the vibration signals continuously and if we find any symptoms regarding any one of the failure then obviously we have to go for a repair work or monitoring work. So there are two most common machinery faults are there in a rotor bearing system. The first one is a rotor unbalance and the another one is misalignment. Okay. So we'll see one by one. The first one is unbalance. Okay. So if the center of gravity of the system doesn't match with the axis of the shaft that is called as unbalance. There are three reasons of vibrations are there. The first one is no material is homogeneous. So homogeneous means the material properties are same in all the directions. Okay. So in universe, fortunately or unfortunately, no material is completely homogeneous. Okay. And the second one is most of the discs are made to carry attachments like blades. Okay. All the blades mounted cannot be exactly identical. For example, the pumps and uh, the turbines are carrying blades. Okay, So this will create an unbalance in the shaft. And the next one is the generator rotors are made with several windings and they cannot be manufactured to be perfectly symmetrical. Okay, So in the generators the windings are used to generate the electricity. Okay, So these uh, windings are not uniform in mass. Okay, So that will create an unbalance in the shaft. So these three are the main reasons. Okay, And there are plenty of uh, other reasons are there. The first one is disc or component eccentric on shaft. Okay, So we are going to fix a disc in a shaft. If we are not placing this uh, disc in a proper manner then what will happen is it will produce some unbalance. Then the second one is dimensional inaccuracies. Maybe dimensional inaccuracies in the blades. Then eccentric machining or forming inaccuracy. So, do, so during the machining then uh, if there is some eccentricity is there or uh, during uh, for example in the blades there is a hole uh, to fix in the shaft. Okay, So if the hole is uh, with some eccentricity then what will happen is then it will produce some unbalance. Then oblique angled component. So if the component is not perfectly 90 degree then it will produce some unbalance. Then bent shaft then section of blade or vein broken off. So this is an important thing. If a blade is broken, then what will happen is 
the mass is accumulated on the opposite side okay so for example if a fan has four blades so if one of this uh, blade uh, broken off then what will happen is the mass is accumulated in the opposite side then this will produce some unbalance in the shaft then eccentric accumulation of process dirt on blades okay so the blades are generally used to carry some uh, liquid particles or some slurry particles so during that operation the slurry is accumulated on the blades and the accumulation is not uniform okay for example you can consider the ceiling fan okay so while purchasing the ceiling fan the ceiling fan run with no vibration and no noise okay so after some time of uh, some amount of time what will happen is the dust particles gets accumulated on the ceiling fan and the fan starts to vibrate because the accumulated dust particles in three blades are not uniform okay so that is the reason why the fan starts to vibrate okay and uh, these are all the observed signatures and the last one is frequency of vibration okay so if you measure the vibration for this unbalanced fault and if you convert the time domain signal into a frequency domain then we can see a peak at the one revolution okay one revolution means a peak will be there at the rpm speed okay this is the identification tool for the unbalance you can see that i can show you the graph yeah so this is for a perfect uh, system there is no high peak is there okay so then this is for unbalanced system we have a tall peak value at some rpm so if this is because of uh, unbalance then the peak will occur at exactly at the speed at which the system vibrates so we have to convert the rpm into hertz and the peak will be there exactly at the operating speed so this is how we have to identify the unbalance then the second one is misalignment okay so in general the pump shafts are fitted with the motors with the help of coupling okay so if in the coupling if uh, both the shaft axes are not collinear then what will happen is uh, it will produce some misalignment okay so this misalignment will vibrate the system you can see the animation so here both the shafts are parallel but they are not collinear okay so this starts to the system starts to vibrate okay so why misalignment what is the reason for misalignment okay so in general uh, the different uh, machines are purchased from different kind of suppliers okay so that will not be uniform in nature for example a pump is purchased from one uh, supplier and the motor is purchased from another supplier okay so we have to fix the uh, shaft of uh, pump and uh, motor by using a coupling so if they are not perfect then that will uh, produce some misalignment so the perfect example is the centrifugal pump in the centrifugal pump we are going to fix the motor shaft with the pump shaft okay so we can neglect the misalignment by using some flexible coupling but what will happen is it will strain the couplings and the bearing seals okay the first type of misalignment is parallel misalignment so in this parallel misalignment the two shafts are parallel but they are not collinear okay so this is called as parallel misalignment so what i am going to do is i am going to measure the vibration signal to identify the misalignment so in general we will measure vibration in three direction one is the horizontal direction and the vertical direction then the third one is axial direction so generally we will measure three direction of vibration and we will fix three accelerometer in the bearing so vertical horizontal and the axial okay if it is a parallel misalignment then this will be your signature in the radial direction okay so you will get 1x and 2x and 3x harmonics x means it is rpm for example if your system is running with 100 rpm then you will get peak values at 100 rpm 200 rpm and 300 rpm okay so this is for parallel misalignment then the second one is angular misalignment so the shafts are angular so they are not collinear okay so this is called as angular misalignment in the case of angular misalignment in the axial and the radial direction of accelerometers we can get the 1x 2x and 3x harmonics okay so this is the frequency domain signal the x axis is frequency and the y axis is 
amplitude okay so 1x means for example if your system runs at 100 rpm then you will get peak values at 100 rpm 200 rpm then 300 rpm okay so first you have to measure the vibration for example if the system starts to vibrate then you have to measure the vibration then if it is parallel misalignment then you will get 1x 2x 3x at radial direction if it is angular misalignment then you will get 1x 2x 3x at both axial and radial directions then the next one is bearing misalignment okay so this is the bearing and this is the shaft you can see that it's not 90 degree it's not a perpendicular one okay so this is called as bearing misalignment so in the case of bearing misalignment in axial direction we will get 1x 2x 3x and the important point is the 1x will be with high amplitude 2x a little bit lower and 3x further a little bit lower amplitude okay so this is for a bearing misalignment then the next is for pulley misalignments okay so the pulley misalignment can be classified into two type one is parallel misalignment the shafts are parallel but the line of action or uh, the central point of pulley will not be in a same line okay so that is parallel misalignment in the case of angular misalignment the shaft will not be parallel okay so this is misaligned pulleys in the case of misaligned pulleys you can see that this is the frequency domain we will get 1x at driver speed and 1x at driven speed in both axial and radial direction driver means for example if this pulley is delivering the power to the another one okay so you can consider uh, a pulley used in a floor mill in the floor mill the motor is used to rotate the machine okay so the motor is a driver one and the next pulley is a driven one so if it is misaligned then you will get 1x in driver and 1x in driven rpm okay so this is for misaligned pulley so this is how we have to identify the unbalance and the misalignment so for unbalance for all the kind of unbalance you will get 1x rpm okay so you can convert the time domain signal because the signal what we get from the vibrometer will be in time domain nature okay so you have to convert the time domain signal into a frequency domain signal using fast fourier transform so in general fast fourier transform is used to convert the time domain signal into a frequency domain signal okay so you can convert the signal then if you got 1x rpm then you can blindly say that the system has some unbalance so if it has 1x 2x and 3x then you have to look for the direction so if it is radial then it is parallel if it is both axial and radial if it is then it is angular misalignment so if it is 1x 2x 3x in axial direction and if the 1x value is high then it is bearing misalignment if you got 1x at driver and 1x at driven then it is pulley misalignment okay so this is the process of identifying the fault okay so now uh, in this lecture i have explained you the two sources of vibration that is first one is forces because of internal force vibration because of internal force and the second one is machinery fault okay so in the machinery fault i have explained two types of fault that is unbalance and misalignment and i have shown you the frequency standards frequency spectrum for both unbalance and misalignment by referring the standard chart and by comparing the standard with the experiment values we can identify the faults okay so in the next lecture we will see the remaining three sources of vibration that is resonance flow induced vibration and the self excited vibration